Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to paint elephant skin in acrylics. Now for this I'm going to take a section of an acrylic painting I did for a full length tutorial on my Patreon channel. Now this here is really one of the more thicker, more wrinkly sections of the elephant so I thought this would be a really good section to focus this video on. Now the first thing here is I want to make this as simple as I can. This is quite challenging because there are a lot of those lights and darks, the patterns, the way that that skin looks bumpy. So all of that can be very overwhelming before we've even started. So my first priority is to make the process as simple as I can. So I've mapped in just with a dark brown, the main dark sets of wrinkles. I'm not focusing at the moment for the initial stage on anything else. Once they were dry, I'm then going in with more of my lighter mid-tone, sort of like a greyish brown, and mapping in some kind of base layer. Now this layer is just mainly to hide my background colour, no more than that. I don't really want to focus on shading or any kind of detail whatsoever. Now I will need to do a second layer because you can still see some of my green background through the um, first base layer. That's normal, it's just because I've added a little bit of water there to make that paint easier to use. So you want to wait for that first layer to dry and then add a second layer as I am here. Now as I progress through this layer you can really see how I'm starting to achieve a bit more of a smooth blended look to this layer. Now I feel this is really important for getting the wrinkles on the leg or any part of the skin looking realistic. If I have too many harsh start and stop points here, the leg is potentially going to look more square and two dimensional. So obviously with the leg, any shape like this, the same would be with the trunk, we wanna make it look like it's a three dimensional rounded object. So the light source is gonna play a very huge part of this layering process. So the shadow on the left side, which is what I'm reinforcing at the moment, gradually will roll over to the top surface of the leg. So this is where I really want to capture it at this stage. If I do this now, it's going to be easier for me to paint my wrinkles on top. So once that layer has dried, now I can start mapping in the main sets of wrinkles. Now for me, these are the wrinkles that I notice first, so whether or not it's because they've got a dark shadow or a bright highlight, but they're the ones that are my main focus. Now the only reason being, that makes it easier for me to simplify the process. If I focus on every single wrinkle first, it's going to be very overwhelming. So I just want to make this as easy as I can. Now, this is something that I do focus on the real-time version on Patreon. So if you would like to follow along to this tutorial, you get the reference photo line art and full material list. There are no sections sped up or cut out, and I actually have a voiceover while I'm painting. So every process is explained in the moment. If you are interested in this tutorial or any of my other in-depth tutorials, then I will link my Patreon in the description below. Now you can see here that there is no detail yet. I don't want to be painting my brightest highlights, I want to be just mapping in the main shape of that leg. Now the shape of the leg is going to really depend on where we put the wrinkles, and that goes down to the light source. So the lighting on this reference photo was particularly on the right hand side. So you can see that the right side of the trunk is brighter than the left, the right side of the face and the ear and so on. And I want to make sure that I capture that on the leg as well. So all of my main highlighted wrinkles are on that right side, but they do taper off to the left and the right. Look at how there is always curves to my wrinkles here, they're not straight lines. Now the way that those are going to be curving is going to be dependent on the area of the body. The way that the wrinkles move on the leg are very different to the ear. So this is something again that I want to pay very close attention to. Now the brush technique that I am using here, I prefer to use smaller brushes in my work. I feel that I don't skip through very important layers and I do find that when working with larger brushes it's easier to do that. But now I've worked on that top quarter of that leg, look at how I've now started to put in more of my highlights. So again, this is all about a layering process, and I speak about the layering process in all of my videos, here on YouTube and of course the in-depth versions on Patreon. I also mention about glazes, and this is my first glaze that I'm applying here. Now I do have a specific video here on YouTube and it's talking you through how I use glazes using different examples of portraits that I have done. So if that's of interest, I'll link that video in the description below as well. Now the glaze, for me, you wanna be making sure without doubt that that first, second, however many layers underneath are completely dry. If the layers underneath are even just a little bit tacky and you apply a glaze on top, it's going to lift up that wet paint underneath and your glaze won't work and you'll end up creating a really muddy layer. 
So you do want to make sure that any of that painting where a glaze is going to be applied is completely dry. Now a glaze, I don't use any glazing medium, I just thin my paints down with water and that there is to basically adjust and tint the colour of the layers of paint underneath. So here you can see I'm just working with some basic beiges, some tans, it's all pretty muted at the moment, there's no real specific colour but that's fine because I can do all of that with my glazes. Now again that tutorial that I've got here on YouTube really does focus on that so if glazing is of interest then that is in that description. So what I've done now is I've switched over to a smaller liner brush so that I can start to hint at a few more of these tinier highlights but also more of those delicate details. When you look at elephant skin there are many small tiny little dips, little ridges that I want to be making sure that I capture. Now this area here is in shadow so the painting that I'm working on now, this layer, is too bright but I need it to be a little bit bright on that dark section because I'm going to apply glaze over the top which will darken those highlights. So I always speak about the importance of contrast, how dark your shadows are and how bright the highlights are but in some situations here where I want those shadows to have an additional glaze of colour over the top we do need to work with some slightly lighter layers in order for that glaze to work properly. If we work with darker details, which would technically be the right value for that reference photo, but then we add a glaze over the top, that is going to darken it to a degree. So that's always something to bear in mind. Now at this point, I was really happy with what I'd created so far, so I was now going to do the lower section to the same level. So again, the process now is a rinse and repeat. I'm going to map in my darks first, I'm then going to start putting in some of those highlights and then work on building up that shape of the leg through the shadows and the highlights. Now the way that this is curving at this point now, it starts to slope down a little bit more towards the right hand corner and this is important. So whenever you've got any main structure, so in this case it was the joint in the leg, we're going to have movement either with the skin, wrinkles or fur, depending on the animal that we're painting. So in this case, the wrinkles are going to start to curve down towards that joint so that we can build up the shape and form of the leg. It's really important here to make sure that we've got that right. Now the one thing that I'm not overly worried about at all is making sure that I've painted every single wrinkle. For me, I don't feel like I want to get that much detail in my paintings. That would be more for hyperrealism, where you can't tell the difference between your painting and that reference photo you're working from. I like to go with more of a photorealistic finish, so I don't feel that I do need to paint in every single wrinkle. However, I do want to be making sure that the wrinkles are going in the right direction and that they're about the right size because those two things are going to affect what that part of the body looks like. Now something I feel is very important is brush technique. The amount of pressure that we apply to a brush is going to give us a range of techniques down to how we hold the brush, where we hold the brush and also the amount of paint that we load onto the bristles. Do we have too much water? Is there too much paint in that mixture? All of these things can really affect the sort of brush stroke that's created. So again, this is something that I do focus my in-depth tutorials on. Depending on the range of subjects that I've got there, the brush technique is going to vary. So at this stage here, I'm going to start to add in a few more of my brightest highlights and reinforce the darkest wrinkles. Now what this is doing is reinforcing the contrast. Now this is something I've already spoken about and I mention it in all of my videos here on YouTube. The best way of achieving realism in a painting is not by getting the exact colour, it's by making sure that your lights and darks are accurate. So now I'm going to go back in with this liner brush and reinforce the brightest highlights on the leg. Now it's very important that the highlights and shadows are in the right place, because again going back to what I've mentioned previously in this video, that's going to affect the shape of that part of the body. Now this is what's going to make it look three dimensional because now the highlight is on the very top centre of those wrinkles, it's going to make it look like that section of the wrinkle is at the top and then the shadows and midtones that we've built up previously are curving over that wrinkle. So it's going to help to build up that three dimensional shape. So I really do hope that this video has been useful, if it was I would really appreciate it if you could give it a like and a thumbs up, it makes a huge difference to my channel. Here's a finished photo of my painting and as I've mentioned this is available from start to finish, the background, the calf, all of this on my Patreon channel. So if you do have any art related questions feel free to pop them in the comments below because I'm more than happy to help if I can. 
I'm going to be uploading another video to YouTube next week. But as always, thank you so much for watching.